We want to see, yes, intellectual property policies enhanced at national levels. My name is Masi Kinowisho, and I'm from Uganda, the Uganda National Intellectual Property Office. Some experts were like, how, how can you have a treaty for exceptions? I mean, it's never done before. And I was like, look, yeah, then do it. I'm John Asen, and I work as the Director General, Chief Executive of the Nigerian Copyright Commission. There will be exceptions because society is actually yielding to you or granting you rights, knowing that there, there should be some reservation as to what society should be able to do, uh, despite the fact that you've been given those rights. We have so many works under copyright. Um, let's say music works, works of literature, scientific works, and so on. And if a researcher is going to ask for permission from every author of a book, it's going to take a lot of time. It will uh, uh, cause a lot of disruption. So the right to research, the right to information, the right to access information should be utilized without having to seek permission. Yeah, there should be a right to research. With the technology we have today, most of the issues around copyright are moving objects. And sometimes they're so fast that you can't even uh, begin to prescribe a particular solution. So we must accept that there should be a movement from what we understood research to be and the kind of allowances that should be made for research and researchers. We must also liberate ourselves from the hold of uh, the classical copyright thinking and uh, begin to interrogate the very foundations of uh, our copyright uh, you know, paradigm. The story of the, the UCT fire, for instance, you know, really got me, uh, it kind of just touched a nerve in me. And, uh, and I asked myself, why, why, should, why should it be so difficult to, <laughs> to allow some level of preservation, not just for the sake of preserving, but preservation in a format that will still be accessible to the public? Africa faces the, the challenge of uh, access to information, uh, issues to do with uh, uh, public health, issues to do with uh, the commitments on the TRIPS uh, agreement, uh, issues to do with education and information dissemination. So we shouldn't uh, put a lot of restrictions to access to, uh, to access information. And Africa already has a lot of handicaps. Uh, I mean, apart from the fact that we, we are late commerce, to the whole, to the table. Those handicaps uh, call for the paradigm shift. For instance, uh, I don't know how I, I try to justify uh, the long duration of copyright. Now that you can get your book, you know, published in in a, in a shorter, you know, frame of time, like we've just seen with the recent uh, book by uh, Prince Harry that sold one point something billion in 24 hours. I mean, the duration should begin to come down. So when people now want more years, the question is, why do you need it? I wouldn't want to use the word decolonization. I mean, uh, because uh, it's not necessarily a, a colonial thing, although I must acknowledge that it often looks like some imposition from some external interest, but I think we are all in this together. And uh, it might just be, it could also be a liberalization, it could be a democratization of the, the copyright system. We have writers, well, we have inventors, well, we have musicians, we have artists, but uh, the, we need to have inputs in terms of uh, what do we want to create these works, what quality of, for example, studios do we have, what education, what is the foundation. So we have to build the foundation uh, as well, and this will uh, 
create more works for protection as well as for access. The right to research is all about human cognitive development. For me, this conference shares our collective aspiration to grow knowledge, to achieve knowledge without borders and research without limits.